This is a Rat Lobber video production. I feel like Michael from GTA 5. June 3rd, 2022. It's a pretty normal day in the real world and an equally as normal day in the virtual sphere. As usual, billions of people are connected to the World Wide Web, and somewhere in the range of 50 million people are logging onto the computer to access Steam, Valve's online gaming platform. Of those millions, 30,000 or so are loading up Gary's Mod, an online sandbox game powered almost exclusively by user-generated content, with hundreds of new add-ons being uploaded by its users every single day. Models, scripts, maps, and just about any type of file you can think of are constantly being downloaded from and uploaded to the Gary's Mod Workshop system, a feature that automates the add-on process and makes getting user-generated content onto your computer as easy as one click. In the background of this massive file exchange service, though, something malicious is about to take place. An attack on Gary's Mod and on Steam itself of such an unprecedented caliber that it would compromise the safety of the Steam Workshop, strike fear into just about everyone who used Steam, and ultimately culminate into death threats, harassment, and borderline federally illegal activity. Before we move on, though, I'd like to do something crazy and relate the topic of the video to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network that encrypts all of the data sent between your device and the internet. The big, scary internet. What a VPN essentially does is trick the sometimes frightening internet into thinking that you're in a different location by changing your IP address. This is useful to you not just so you can LARP as a secret agent, but for a number of reasons you might not even realize. Imagine you're playing an online game like GTA or TF2 that has pretty notoriously unsecure connections. Instead of some random Cheeto-eating hacker in your lobby pulling up your IP address, thinks the Surfshark he'd be pulling up an IP that could be halfway across the world. A VPN is also very helpful if you often use Wi-Fi that isn't your own. Public Wi-Fi is a goldmine for hackers, and by connecting to Surfshark, all the stuff you do online can't be tracked back to you, and even Surfshark itself isn't going to monitor or store anything that you do online, so get weird with it if you want to, you know, go, go crazy. So if you ever need to be secure and anonymous online, Surfshark will have you covered. They'll also have your wallet covered with 83% off plus 3 extra months free when you use the promo code RATLOPPER when you sign up. Remember to click the link in the description to take advantage of this offer, and thanks so much again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. The Steam Workshop is an essential part of the Steam experience. While it might seem simple at first glance, the Workshop actually has a fair bit of complexity to it, thanks to the many roles that it seeks to fill. The Steam Workshop, first and foremost, is a file sharing service, think Mediafire or Mega, but exclusively for user-generated content on the platform. What the Steam Workshop also serves as, though, is a sort of job board for amateur mappers, modelers, and artists. While the primary directive is to let users download and play content made for it for free, if a developer of a game thinks your content is good enough, they might pay you a fat stack of change to put it in the game officially. And this secondary usage of the workshop is probably one of the only reasons that it even still exists. Having a large file upload service that is virtually unmoderated on the biggest gaming platform in the world opens Valve up to all kinds of legal trouble. But the amount of money they make off of users submitting content for Steam games likely far outweigh those risks. The Steam Workshop is an anomaly and a relic of a more lenient time in gaming. I personally think the only reason that it's even still around was because it was made so long ago. I really can't see a billion dollar company in the current year giving users this much freedom on their platform. So with all of that said, the Steam Workshop sounds like a pretty lawless and seedy place. One might assume that with all the freedom that the Steam Workshop offers, also comes a responsibility on the user to look out for any dangerous add-ons or malware infected files before downloading. But that isn't really the truth. Since the Steam Workshop launched 12 years ago, there really haven't been any problems with malware, viruses, or any kind of malicious files making their way onto users' computers. Sure, there's been degeneracy, drama, and all kinds of legal issues that have stemmed from the Steam Workshop, but pretty much never in its long history has it ever had to face the threat of malware on any large scale. That was until last year. In early June of 2022, Gary's Mod users and their workshop, for the first time ever, had come under attack. The target? Players who had subscribed to a popular workshop add-on known as Glue Library. Glue Library was not a traditional Gary's Mod add-on. 
While most add-ons users download would do something like introduce a new gun or car into the game, Glue Library was an add-on that enabled other, more comprehensive add-ons to work. It was for this very reason that it was the perfect target for a cyber attack. Players would download the add-on as another add-on would require it, and probably forget that they even had it installed in the first place. Which for most of Glue Library's existence didn't really matter. It was a good add-on, worked, and did exactly what it was supposed to do. Right up until it didn't. For some reason, the creator of the Glue Library add-on decided to change how it worked overnight. Instead of expanding the capabilities of Gary's mod, the add-on focused instead on expanding something else entirely. All of the actual functionality of the add-on was stripped out, and its code was replaced with what is probably the closest the Steam Workshop will ever come to hosting malware. Users who had the Glue Library add-on installed would jump into Gary's mod, press the W button on their keyboard to walk forward and hear a loud scream played at max volume, along with other disturbing sounds, while a very graphic image of pornography flashed on screen. Which honestly is one of the more tame outcomes for something like this, but it's important to remember that Gary's Mod is a game that is very popular with a young audience. Many children flock to the game because it hosts Five Nights at Freddy's or Poppy Playtime content. As you can imagine, the public reaction was panic and confusion. People weren't really sure which add-on was causing it as the average Gmod player tends to have pages and pages of add-ons installed at any given time. Many were concerned with the possibility of their computer security being breached. Before anyone even had a chance to investigate the issue any further and get to the bottom of the attack though, the screamer began to spread to other places. By the time it was all said and done, at least six popular add-ons had been infected and would trigger the jump scare if a user had them installed. People began deleting their entire Gary's Mod installation and unsubscribing to a countless number of add-ons that they had collected over the years, out of fear that any add-on they've come to grow fond of could be a carrier of malicious files. The Gary's Mod Workshop was in complete disarray, with users being urged not to download anything from the service until it was clear that the attack was over. It's estimated that somewhere in the ballpark of 40,000 Gary's Mod players were infected by the malicious add-ons, and the damage and time that it wasted likely far exceeds that. By the end of the day, the Gary's Mod Workshop was basically on fire, and Glue Library, the add-on at the center of it all, had been banned along with its creator. As you can probably guess, that was hardly the end of the story though, and the effects of what had happened would last much much longer than just one day. The add-on was banned. The creator was banned. Not just from the workshop, but the entirety of the Steam platform as a whole, which, by the way, means that he lost access to every game that he'd ever bought on Steam, ever. It sucks to suck. While the add-on being deleted meant that new users couldn't be exposed to the hack, the files were still on infected players' computers, which meant that it wasn't over yet. Guides started to pop up on Steam about how to remove the malicious files, and word was spread not to boot Gary's Mod up until you had verified that yours were safe. People on the Gary's Mod subreddit were beginning to put the pieces together of what exactly had just happened, and a clearer image of the attack started to form. The general feeling in the air had shifted from panic to investigation. People were curious as to how this could have happened, who was responsible for it, and why it had even been done in the first place. Luckily, they didn't have to wonder for long, as embedded inside of the add-on, a manifesto of sorts had been discovered. A code file hidden inside of the add-on called f**k.lua. This file not only executed the malicious code that had caused all this, it also included a message from the developer of the add-on himself, Captain Corrigan. F**k you, Steam. F**k you. F**k you, Steam. F**k you, Gary. F**k you, Gabe. I f**k the f**king Steam moderators of f**king Steam f**king no works. Fuck you, Steam Workshop. I fuck your workshop issues. Lua errors? Pay me money or die. You fucking stupid piece of shit. Fuck you. I want you and family died in suffering. I killed your 12 woman. I killed your mother. I killed your god. Eat my shit and lick my balls. This message was important for a number of reasons. First off, it was unsure at the time whether the creator of the add-on had done this or if it was some sort of external hack on Valve's server from an outside entity. This message confirmed that it was in fact the original add-on creator who was responsible and also established his reasoning for doing all of this. As it turned out, the developer branch of Gary's Mod was updated just a few days before this all happened, causing a bunch of Lua errors to plague the workshop and most importantly, Captain Corrigan's Glue Library add-on. 
As you can imagine, most people who used his glue library add-on had no idea what was responsible for the errors and chose to blame Captain Corrigan himself, expressing their anger at the add-on malfunctioning in the comments section and on his profile. According to people who were familiar with Captain Corrigan, he was already experiencing poor mental health at this time in his life, and that, paired with the negative comments on something he had put so much time into, sent him over the edge, resulting in the events of the June 3rd incident taking place. So really, all of this happened because Facepunch pushed out a lousy update. While all of this was being discovered and people were investigating just exactly what had happened, copycat pranks began to pop up on the workshop with many different add-on creators purposely infecting their own add-ons with jump scares, displaying things like porn, racist images and audio, and even gore. While the reasoning behind the original attack had been discovered, along with the exact file that caused the jump scare, the battle for the Steam Workshop was far from over at this point. YouTubers like Mudahar and Pyrocynical made videos documenting the events and warned their viewers to go through the necessary steps to delete their malicious content before playing Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod server, you would be given a screamer and an image of Goatsy. All in all, throughout the month of June, at least 12 add-ons were reported to have malicious code inside of them. While the initial confusion of the original hack was no longer there, people were still concerned that any add-on they could download could be the next glue library. So how did Valve respond to what is easily the largest attack on their workshop service in history? That's easy. They did. Valve doesn't really respond to anything these days, and after all, Gary's mod is Face Punch's baby, not theirs. The Steam Workshop has had community moderation since 2019, but evidently that didn't really do much to stop June 3rd from happening. Realistically, there aren't really that many safeguards that stop malicious content from being spread on the Steam Workshop. It's probably pretty hard for moderators to check through every single file that larger add-ons might have, and it's especially difficult to monitor every update that a creator makes to his add-on. While we all got off relatively easy this time, and the worst thing that the attack brought was some mental illness-fueled trolling, who's to say the next time it won't be even more sinister? I don't mean to sound like an alarmist here, but it probably is a matter of if and not when. If the biggest attack yet on the service isn't enough to get Valve to take threats super seriously, then who knows what is. All I know is I'm pretty fond of the Steam Workshop, and I'd hate to see Valve pull the plug on it one day because of a lack of care. I guess if there's anything to take away from this video, it's that the Steam Workshop is a resilient little place. It's also a place that seems to exist pretty much by accident and the chance of any major service being created that even comes close to being as free and as open as the Steam Workshop is pretty much impossible. But with that freedom comes a price, so treat the Steam Workshop and frankly really anything you download online with caution. Thanks for watching this video, I have been Ratlobber, thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and... Ruf mich an, Alter, ruf mich auf meinem Handy an!